Okay guys, it is Mitchell and I wanted to go ahead and make a video for you guys comparing stock Android or close to stock Android on this device. We have a Pixel Experience ROM versus like stock MIUI or stock MIUI-ish, which in this case is Xiaomi EU with like my little de-bloated touches. But as always, before we get into this, I wanna thank everyone that uses my affiliate links. Without your support, we couldn't keep the channel going. Also, I'm gonna have articles up on my website this week on this topic. So if you wanna read more about this, go ahead and check that out down below. Okay, you guys know the drill. Go ahead, follow me on Twitter. If you guys wanna connect, go ahead, check out my Xiaomi Tography fan page, and let's just jump into this. So one of the big things I hear from people is that they hate MIUI, and I totally get it. This is a personal preference type of thing, but I just wanted to talk about some of the differences, some of the similarities, and how I kind of feel on this. Recently, MIUI switched, and now MIUI has an app tour. You can choose to have an app tour or not have an app tour. You can always install a third-party launcher. My favorite is Poco Launcher, but right now, just for the sake of this, we are on a totally stock device. You have the Google search bar at the bottom. You can have a widget on your page for that. I've been resetting this device a lot recently, which is why uh, I haven't like gone into setting up the, the home screen necessarily for it, but you can always do that. I have installed different gestures. It's the Francisco fluid navigation gestures. You do need to be rooted to make this work uh, like long-term and work as well as it should. When I have talked about my dislike for gestures, everyone tells me to use these. We'll go ahead and we'll disable them for you guys, just so you guys can see how the stock navigation would be. So here's the stock navigation. As it is, this pill on the bottom, it takes up space. Uh, and with MIUI, the gestures do not take up any space whatsoever. Also to note, with the stock one, you can use a long press of that pill to Google to uh, trigger assistant. And to me, this is just wasted space. We have the search bar here on the bottom, also have the pill. So this, in my opinion, is wasted space. It's redundancy, right? We don't have that on MIUI. We can trigger uh, a long hold of this button to activate Google Assistant. That's a feature that's in the Xiaomi EU ROM, which is very closely related to the stock one. It's not working right now on the K20 Pro, but that will obviously be changed in software. You can obviously customize wallpapers and customize all that stuff. Next thing that we would interface with a lot is our notifications and our notification shade. For me, I like having this, this brightness slider. I just fucked up the brightness for recording this video, but I like having this slider easily available. In regards to the layout of this stuff, this is a layout that obviously you can customize for both. You can have the second page on Xiaomi EU. Notifications, notifications, you can choose to have them Android style or MIUI style. Next one I wanna talk about really quick is, is the actual notifications because people have issues receiving notifications on their device. And I just wanna show everyone how to get around that. So if you're having issues with notifications on the device, enable auto start for that application that allows it to start at permissions, okay? Obviously, you want to go ahead and allow them when the application is being used. Battery saver, now this is another one, okay? Uh, the battery saver on stock MIUI can be aggressive, okay? You can turn all the battery saving stuff off. So if you're having issues with notifications, turn that to no restrictions, allow auto start. One of the added things I like is you can go ahead and have the blurred app previews that you can turn on per application, which I think is pretty interesting because if you're scrolling through applications and you don't want someone to see something, you can have that blurred. Me stock me why when there is an app vault, I have uninstalled app vault on the Google Pixel. You do have you do have the the feed, I guess you would call it the, the the Google Assistant feed. 
which uh, is convenient. I'm gonna say that right off the top. It is slightly more convenient than what we have on MIUI. There's no way to get around that. You can have an application or you can have an icon that'll take you right into this on MIUI, but this feature is kind of just to Google. We have uh, this Google Smart kind of predictive app thing with that uses some of your most frequently used apps and then also has like suggestions for apps that you can jump into. I never use this. I haven't used this whenever I've been running a, a Pixel ROM. This might be something that you're really into. For me, it's not. Outside of this, just kind of the overall aesthetic of how we have the icons arranged, right? The sizing between them. For me personally, I just prefer this aesthetic. Personal preference, what I say is just my opinion. Let's hop over into the settings. Quite a bit of difference. Something that I like that is convenient is with MIUI, you can go ahead and set the amount of data. So I can go ahead and set it for, to say that I have two gigabytes of data a day and to go ahead and show me how much data I have left throughout the day. So that's a convenience feature I like in MIUI. To my memory, most uh, Android open source ROMs don't have this. Totally possible that Oxygen OS does and I haven't used Oxygen OS in quite a while. Apps and notifications, screen time uh, in MIUI, that looks quite different, right? System settings, but a lot of this functionality is all right here and it's still available in regards to like system apps, what you can allow them to do, all recording, off, call waiting. These are all things that you can have done automatically. One thing I do really like is dual apps. If you have an application with two different accounts, you can go ahead and set two icons up for each account. If you guys can figure out which one I have set up, let me know in the comment section down below. We also have the ability to lock each specific app and then we can have hidden apps. Hidden apps is a command that you do from the home screen that will launch you into that hidden app. And you can make that application use your fingerprint uh, to open up the app. So for some people, that could be a big, big deal. Display, display settings. Obviously this is gonna have different display settings. But we, as you guys can see, we do have the dark mode and we've had it in MIUI for a while. Status bar. I don't know if we can actually change any stuff with the status bar in, where would notifications be? Notifications. Ah, uh, notification dots, do not disturb notification lights. Uh, one thing I like about the status bar notifications is we can go ahead and change this stuff uh, for the icons to use and we can have more customizability into what icons and what things we want displayed. Okay, battery and performance. We do have the new uh, Android 10.0 battery saver feature on it. And this is kind of the battery stuff that we'd be looking at. Let's get out of the uh, settings because obviously a lot of different Android skins have different settings. And let's just go over kind of like the actual experience of using stuff in my Telegram group. Okay, the Ability to have this layout, which we have right here for recent applications, which is something that we do a lot. To me is more intuitive than this kind of mess that we have on stock Android. Um, on the subject of stock Android, something that people are gonna complain about is like bloat and, and Chinese applications, all that kind of stuff. You can remove all that. And if you guys can see, I have the stock Google Calendar application. You can uninstall and reinstall the stock Google Clock application. You can use Google Photos for all of your stuff. Google now has a file manager and you can hide the built-in Xiaomi one. Although the Xiaomi file manager in my opinion is totally usable. Like it, there, there's nothing, there's no added functionality that the Google version of this application would have that it wouldn't. I've uninstalled the stock Xiaomi email and I have Gmail up. 
I uninstalled the stock Xiaomi Notes app, replaced it with Keep Notes. Built in, we do have the screen recorder, which I love. We have a scanner, which is something that you might not appreciate until you need it type of thing. And having the scanner that comes stock on MIUI is nice. We have a stock weather application, but that can be uninstalled also. So a lot of the actual applications and a lot of the actual points that you uh, interact with on MIUI, a lot of that stuff can be totally replaced with the stock Google version of that. So if you're no longer having to interact with the Xiaomi specific applications, the Xiaomi specific software that, or, or things that are needed to add functionality to your device, then you're essentially able to create experience where all of the applications that you interface with are either ones that you did before or Google applications. So the only real tangible difference left, in my opinion, would be what we have for settings, which you cannot say that the way Google has settings laid out and the way Google does settings is better than MIUI, it's just different, okay? If you prefer this aesthetic over this aesthetic, that's a personal preference. And you're totally allowed to have those personal preferences. But to me, I don't see a great deal of, of advantage to this over this when this one allows me a higher amount of customizability, higher amount of personalization, and a higher amount of tweaking without any negative performance drawback. The reality, at least to me, is that even if there's something about MIUI that you hate, my question to you is it something that one, can be changed with deep bloating, is it a notifications issue that can be solved with the correct settings to enable those notifications? Or is it just an aesthetic preference? Because out, outside of that, I'm, I'm not seeing an advantage to this wasted screen real estate at the bottom, which I, I do think is wasted screen real estate. I don't see an advantage to this form of multitasking over this form of multitasking if you're able to see more apps and more content and get to a different application faster. If you guys didn't know, we have a quick app changing gesture where you just long swipe across the screen. Same way we have it with stock Android. So my question to you is that if you hate MIUI or if there's a reason that you're dying to get on a stock Google type of ROM. Is it functionality or is it purely aesthetic purposes? So I want to know, okay, and I'm ha I'll have a poll up here and I'll want you guys to tell me in the comments, is your preference based on aesthetics and based on how it looks or is it based on functionality? Because I, I understand that on a Google Pixel, this experience will be different. But if you're running a custom ROM, the amount of functionality that you would have is going to be similar to what we have here. Aesthetics or functionality? Why is it that you prefer MIUI? Why is it that you dislike MIUI? Tell me in the comment section down below. As always, it's been Mitchell coming to you guys from Hanoi. Peace.